Aloha and welcome to the Embodied Healing Self Podcast with your host, Jen Mons. Each week, join me for soul-inspired, conscious conversations around embodied healing and awakening to your soul's purpose. Thank you for listening in. Hi, you guys. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me again. So we're going to talk about something kind of fun and interesting today, which is our intuition. So many of you know that I am a wellness and energy intuitive, and I am also an intuitive life coach trainer. And I'm going to share just a little bit about my story on how I reconnected with my intuition, what happened for me when I finally decided to claim it, I'll get a little bit into the different types and how it works. So I'll get a little bit into it, but I really want to talk more today about maybe something that is holding you back around your intuition. At least I know it did for me. So the reason I named this podcast, Are You There, God, It's Me, Your Intuition, is because I thought about that book that I read in probably high school, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. And I thought about how... You know, it's something that I've known has always been a part of me. It's just whether or not I choose to listen or to trust it or to share it with other people. And chances are, if you're listening to this episode, you're probably already aware of your intuition. I was recording with the lovely founders of Wellness Lately the other week, and we were talking about why it's so hard to understand intuition. I think it's largely misunderstood because nobody's really talking about it. And so I want to just provide a little bit of maybe insight for you today. One thing that I believe is that we're all born with it. It's a natural part of who we are. And I think that as a culture, we have this sort of belief that it's like a supernatural power. And I would encourage you or invite you to embody and believe that it's not at all. In fact, it's we're born with it, right? Like you look at animals, they know the difference between a good and a bad person. They have an instinct. If you look at children, like children have a natural instinct to be curious about things, to know things without ever being taught right? So I think this is our natural state of being is this intuition. And we're in a time where there are some beliefs, some unhealthy beliefs, I think about it. And I know one of mine that kept me from really claiming it was this fear of bypassing God. It's like if I say, that I'm listening to my intuition or I'm intuitive, does that mean that I think I have the answer and that God doesn't? And my question back to you would be, do you see yourself as separate from God? Or do you see the world through the lens of unity? Do you see yourself as a reflection of God? Do you see yourself as a reflection of the divine? Do you see yourself as a reflection or, you know, like a refraction through a light, right? Like through a rainbow. Do you see yourself as part of that bigger picture or do you see yourself as separate? And so then I realized then, well, if I don't see myself as separate, then my intuition is not, not of the divine either. And in fact, I was able to find a quote, which actually through, I found it in the book called Wheels of Life. I recorded about the chakras a couple weeks ago. That says, if therefore thine eye be single, then whole body shall be filled with light. So if we all look through one eye, we see the light and that eye of clarity is intuition. So I'm coming to you today to give you permission to be curious about what your belief is around your intuition. Intuition is when you know that the person calling you on the telephone as the phone rings is going to be your best friend before you even pick up the phone and hear their voice. Intuition is seeing 
somebody's face in your mind's eye and reaching out to them. And then they tell you that they're so glad you reached out because they needed support. Intuition is not turning right to go down that dark alley, not just because it's a dark alley, but because there's a feeling in your gut that it's not the right choice, that it's not a safe choice. There are many times, multiple times a day, an hour, and a minute that we're listening to our intuition. And so most of you, if you're in the world of being curious about your intuition, you know that there are four types. There is claircognizance, which is sort of a knowing. I think this is the hardest one because it's just like you know what you know what you know. And sometimes you can just know the answer to a math problem and not even know how you got it, but you just know. Or you just know that you're supposed to take that job and you don't know why, but you're going to take that job. Or you know you're supposed to call your best friend and you don't know why. There's clairaudience, which is hearing. So normally for me, typically when I hear things, it comes in through my left ear. It's a voice of clarity. It's my own voice. And it never comes from a place of fear. So intuition is like a feeling of peace and knowing. So if you have the feeling that something's not right, it's not like from a place of fear. It's just like from a place of clarity, a place of knowing that this is the better choice. There's clairvoyance, which is some people refer to as the ability to see into the future. But it's really just looking through the mind's eye and clarity. It's the ability to see visions or thoughts as if you're like watching a movie of thoughts going through your mind, which is sometimes what we do when we practice in meditation. But just getting really clear insight and visions through your third eye on stuff that there usually is no way you could have any perceived information about. So there are two types of intuition, local and non-local intuition. Local intuition is what people are more familiar with. It's the recognizing of patterns, like having, you know, I've been here before or something like that. Non-local would be receiving information that you really just could not have any previous exposure to. And so that is really, you know, as I'm working in session with people, both of them will come through, but the non-local is where there's a lot of clarity that comes through. And oftentimes you can get from point A to point B a lot quicker because you just kind of move through all of the stuff in between. So the last type of intuition is clairsentience, which is the feeling like we receive messages through the body. And if you listen to my podcast on the journey through the chakras, I talked about how clairsentience is really an open sacral chakra, clear audience is associated with the fifth or the throat chakra and clairvoyance, the third eye or the sixth chakra. And so a lot of times, if you're a person who can actually see auras or colors, you might notice those particular colors around that person. And if you're not a person who sees, senses, or feel these things, or at least you're not aware of it yet, you can even just think about like how different colors make you feel. So you can just start there. And you'll notice, like, you know, I would just invite you to start there, because that can tell you a lot about sort of the perception of the world that you live in. So my story on reconnecting with my intuition You know, it's really more of a journey. I can remember as a child hearing the words like, oh, you're too sensitive and you think you know everything. And those words like really stuck with me. And yes, I am sensitive and I do know a lot because I do have clear cognizance and I don't know how I know what I know. And to be quite honest with you, I don't know that I would have been completely aware of it or embodied it if it hadn't been for my children. I became a mother and I started to see that they had these natural abilities to be aware through hearing, through seeing, through feeling to the world around them that was just a very natural part of their being. And how I chose differently than from how I was raised is I leaned in and I listened. There was just no way that they could have the information that they had. 
without it coming from a higher source. It wasn't something they learned. It wasn't something they were taught. It was something they knew. And so I began to listen and be curious about this information that they were sharing rather than shut them down because of my own fears of not understanding it or because of my own fear of remembering that I was also extremely empathically sensitive. So I really want you to hear this if you're a parent, because I think this is a large part of our healing process as we move forward in the world, is realizing that we all have these abilities to be intuitive, because what that means that we're saying is that we're all actually connected to one another. That's all intuition is saying. It's like we are putting our feelers out. We have these sort of feelers out into the world because we trust and we live in unconditional love and we know that we are all connected. If we say that we don't believe in it, then we're saying that we don't believe we are all one. That's all it is, is this higher energy, this which is God, right? God is just speaking through me my whole life. The one thing that I can say is that I've never felt abandoned by God, and it's because I've never abandoned myself, and I've always listened to my inner voice. Well, not always. I've had a couple times where, of course, I didn't, and I made bad choices. <laughs> We all do. But I've always had that inner voice, that inner knowing, even if it was uncomfortable. So that is the voice of God. That is the voice of intuition. That is the voice of unconditional love. It is the voice of a greater power, divine consciousness, whatever you want to call it. We are all saying the same thing. And I grew up in the Catholic Church. I have prayed every single night to go to bed. I am a Christian. And I also honor all beliefs. I can remember as a child when I knew I had this inner knowing that my brother was gay and then being told in the church that that was a sin and just knowing that that wasn't true. Just knowing that God would not create something that was of sin like that. I just didn't believe it. The words had been, and this is my, of course, my belief, the words were just misunderstood. They were perceived differently than I perceived them. And so when I think about my overall religion or belief in showing up, it's one of love and acceptance. And that is God. That is unconditional love. And when we're in that space, that's when our intuition comes online super strong. So as a parent, I started to witness my children with all of these experiences, and I chose not to shut them down. And I became curious about well, how have I shut down myself? And I can remember experiences in my life where I would share even just, you know, knowing the presence of my grandfather who had passed away was with me and sharing it and just being told not to say those things. And so I decided differently. I decided to be curious and have conversations with my children. And we learn differently. Like, I can remember my daughter being in a Christian school and coming home and just telling me like, well, like, if there's angels in the Bible, then how come when people say they see them or talk to them, it's like we're not supposed to talk about that? I thought it was such an interesting question because I think the fear comes from not knowing or understanding, which essentially comes from viewing that we are separate, which is the fall from grace. It is the separation from God, thinking that we are separate, that causes us to fear and judge others. Because the true place of knowing God is in the unity, it's in the knowing, it's in the heart. And when my intuition really came online again, was a few years ago when I was in Virginia doing a transformational leadership and development program through an organization called CORE. So you may remember an episode with Britta Eske on healing core wounds. And I'd been doing a lot of personal work on this. And one of my deepest wounds specifically was around my near-death experience with the birth of my first daughter. And I went through like the whole like range of emotions around that, right? Like this was trauma for me years and years. And this happened in 2006. And so there's this whole interesting story that happened in synchronicities, which I won't get into, but basically I was in a, I was in a very safe, sacred space to explore just a really deep wound that needed to be healed. And the, the beautiful woman that was holding that space for me 
was somebody whose mother had passed away when she was born and who had almost passed away when her daughter was born. So it was like just perfect that we were together. And it only took a matter of seconds. I totally surrendered to grace. And when I allowed myself to go into the space of being curious about what had really happened, I felt like I saw it through the eyes of God and through the eyes of truth. Because in this physical body, in this life, there were about five days that I really truly don't have very much memory of when my daughter was born because I was on a lot of medication and in a lot of pain and quite honestly subconsciously was sort of like deciding this is all worth it like you know this is like should I be here like this is really hard and if you know if you've listened to my other podcast episodes before that was really my rebirth that was my reawakening that was like the former version of me, the mechanical engineer, executive, just military, like very hardwired, was learning that I wasn't in control and that surrender was the path. And it, it included, you know, what I was bringing into the world, the birth of my daughter. And so I just completely fell into a path of surrender. And so when I went and revisited this in 2018 this deep wound that I was carrying, I actually felt like I was re-experiencing the whole thing all over again. I felt the deep pain in my liver because I had liver failure. I felt the frozen shoulder. They call it my shoulder was, it's like this dark energy. It was just like, I mean, my shoulder was literally seizing up. I was dry heaving. I know that this probably sounds terrible, but my point is, is that I allowed myself to have the full experience The book Waking the Tiger by Peter Levine talks about how cells hold cellular memory of trauma. And so when I allowed it to come back online, I actually felt the entire experience again. And it was such an amazing experience. I saw the whole thing. Like I could see my daughter, her spirit wanting to come into my body and just me not feeling ready because she was such a high vibration soul. And I was really getting a soul upgrade. (laughs) It's really what was happening. Like health crisis equals soul upgrade, rebirth. Like you get to live again. What are you going to do differently this time? And, you know, I can remember as my mentor was taking me through the process, she was just like, what, are you angry at God? Like what's happening? I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm so grateful. And because of that experience, the willingness to actually feel and believe like I could die again, because that's what it felt like, because my body was there. Because I went to the courage to go that deep, which felt really deep for me, like that opened up and brought back the sight, the clear sight, the clairvoyance, the intuition. It was really just in the surrender. And so as I practice now, or as I live in the space of, and I still resist a lot of what I receive sometimes, so it's still a practice, I'm not totally there. But I realize that the truth that we receive through our intuition, it is God. It is truth. It is clarity. It is unconditional love. Intuition is never from a place of fear or hate or judgment. If you're ever feeling that, that's not your intuition. That's your ego. So it does come to you from unconditional love and it comes when we're not trying. It comes from when we're most relaxed and we just realize that it just is. We actually do live and exist as multidimensional beings and it's just whether or not you allow yourself to see it or feel it or sense it. And most of us aren't. 99.9% of the people on this planet are walking around super numbed out you know, addicted to television or sugar or alcohol, coffee, we're choosing all these things to numb ourselves out. And there's no judgment on that. It's just that know that those are ways that we do numb out. So, and, you know, we still have to exist in this human realm as well. So I totally get it. But if you're wondering, if you're listening, chances are you're probably aware of your intuition. This is just my invitation to you to realize that there's no separation between God and your intuition. It's the voice of love. It's the voice of truth. It's the voice of clarity. And so you're not cheating on God. There's a really deep wounding in our culture in this time around spirituality and versus religion. And I've had 
my own journey with this, right? I'd like really deep and I'm still in it. I am still in it. I know what my truth is. I know who my ascended master is. I don't need to make anybody else wrong for theirs. I'm grateful for mine and my experience. I feel very personally connected to Jesus and Mary Magdalene. That is who comes through for me often. I do not feel that it is wrong for anybody else to receive information from any other Ascended Master. It's really just a space of just love and truth. And so that is what God is. Not female or male, not good or bad. It just is an energy of just truth and clarity and acceptance. And that is the space where we connect with our intuition. So I really wanted to just share that because I personally had such a deep wound around, you know, being raised religious, feeling like I was cheating on God or doing the wrong thing or, you know, there's just so many stories and such a deep wound And I've been to the Palace of Popes and I've been to Mary Magdalene's cave five years ago. Like I've gone to these places and I haven't studied a whole lot about it, but I have my own inner knowing, which is what I trust the most. I've had my own visions and dreams and, you know, things that I've received. And then I'll go and look it up and I'll find synchronicities on, you know, a dream that I had and something that I read about. And I just want to offer that there has been information over time that has been misunderstood. And I believe we are moving into a time where intuition is going to be the new mindfulness because the bottom line is that intuition is unity. And if there is anything that we are learning right now in this COVID-19 pandemic, it is that we need unity. We are having a global healing crisis. This is not... In my eyes, this is way more than just a virus. A virus is a frequency. A virus does not discriminate, and guess what? Neither does love. So I believe it is a time where we can come together in unity and see just how connected we all are. And that is through the eyes of God, and that is our intuition is how we perceive the way we show up in this larger integrated network that we exist in. So that is my invitation, my offering for you. I'd love to hear your insight because I think that, you know, this is really open for a deeper conversation. I really do. I'd love to have more in-depth conversations around this because I find that it's a block that keeps us from trusting our intuition, from being aware of our intuition, from communicating and existing between worlds You know, it's like we were taught differently, especially if we have a really staunch religious upbringing of a certain way. And not to say that any of that is wrong. It's not right or wrong. It's our perception of what we learn that makes the difference. And what I'm offering is that when we see ourselves in unity and not separate, then we can be all knowing, all loving, all receiving, all giving because we're in love, not fear not judgment. And I am also not saying that it is okay to show up in certain ways. That is not, I'm not saying, I'm not giving permission to, you know, live your life irresponsibly and and hurt other people. But I do believe that for the greater consciousness to those that I am speaking, we take radical self-responsibility for how we show up. But more importantly, I encourage you to consider the frequency of love and unity and that our intuition is the voice of God because it is the voice of our highest self, the highest expression of who we are. So thank you for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. I look forward to connecting with you in the next upcoming episodes. Stay tuned. Have a great day. Aloha. Hello, friends, and thank you so much for joining me today and being a part of this community. I know there are many other podcasts that you could be tuning into, and I am deeply honored that you chose to listen in and be present with me today. I love and cherish and appreciate you, and I want to invite you to join our tribe and Facebook group under Jen 
mons.com forward slash connect. I would also love to gift you your guide to discovering and overcoming the self-limiting beliefs standing in the way of you living in optimal health, more energy, fulfillment, and self-confidence to create an embodied, healthy, whole you. You can find this at genmons.com forward slash tribe. I also have one small request to help spread the love. In order for this podcast to show up in the feed of social media platforms of other like-minded people, we need reviews. So please head on over to genmons.com slash podcast to leave a review. You will also find other inspiring episodes on that page. So I personally read these reviews weekly and would love to give you a shout out and share your kind words with our listeners. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook as Jen Mons or The Holistic Coach with the W Holistic and Jen Mons, J-E-N-M-O-N-S dot com. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Aloha.